Welcome to this x rite photo webinar called Cataloging in Lightroom, Organizing Your Images for Traveling, Travel with Mark Munch. My name is Brenda Hipsher. We want to welcome you today. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you're joining us from in the world, we are delighted to have you with us for Mark Munch's first webinar with x rite photo. Mark has been a professional landscape and sports photographer for over 20 years. After completing his studies at Pasadena Art Center College of Design in the spring of 89, Mark immediately began photographing for book publishers like Graphic Arts Center and Time Incorporated. Soon after, Mark represented Canon Camera in several ad campaigns, as well as appearing on Canon Photo Safari, which aired on ESPN Outdoor for eight straight seasons. Mark has been hired to create photography for the likes of Leo Burnett, Kodak, um, McCain Erickson, Carson Hagen, Hallmark, Time Life, Reader's Digest, and the National Geographic on various projects. Mark was designated by Kodak in 2003 as a Kodak photo icon. And Mark's photography has appeared on the covers or inside Time, National Geographic, Traveler, Arizona Highways, Ski, Skiing, Sunset, Outside, Sierra Magazine, and more. His work also appears in books, calendars, cards, uh, postcards, posters, and annual reports. And his work has been included in many different photo exhibitions around the country. We are honored and delighted to have Colorado Mark Munch with us for this great new webinar from x Rite Photo. We had some te technical get difficulties at the beginning of this recording, so we will now join it in progress. My workflow hasn't stayed the same for over a year uh, since digital, really. And what I've also discovered is that since 2010, when Lightroom came out, it really helped because I was able to focus on one program. And with that ability, then, I was able to tackle two of the big issues in digital photography. This is a little bit off track, but very relative. Um, number one is color accuracy, and the other is storage and access to your images. And so I'm going to focus on that. This is a fun picture. This, I believe, is the very first digital image made by mankind. It was actually given to me by the marketing director at JPL, and this is uh, nothing but a series of printed out ticker tapes with little squares that make up pixels and inside the squares are beamed back from the other side of Mars uh, the actual RGB density values and these are being hand colored by the scientists there in the picture and so this I believe is the first digital file and you can see they had a little issue with banding back then but essentially they were working on uh, fairly accurate colors since they were beaming actual RGB numbers all right, so how do I correct my color now? Well, I use this thing called a passport made by x -Rite, and It's wonderful in the way that it works. Um, I can't say enough about it, and I'm going to show you how to incorporate that into the workflow. I'm not going to go into it in great detail because I really want to go into organizing, but I just want to make sure you know that is not for putting lipstick on. It's really for checking color, and it does help <laughs> enormously. Sorry, Brenda. You can see here that I'll give you a little before and then a little after and you can see what it does to some of the color patches uh, especially in the blues and the greens and yellows so this makes a great big difference in your workflow um, you get an image like this and you can see the before and the after and this is done in the camera calibration part or menu of Lightroom it's right here Typically, you're going to see Adobe Standard, and that's how the image is being previewed before I apply the camera profile. Okay, so I'm going to show you how that works. Um, just a couple more examples. This is out in Death Valley. Um, you can see some of the colors on her shirt and how significant it changes from uncalibrated there to calibrated. Once again, a blue picture, which really changes more significantly than any, at least in landscape. You can see there is the uncalibrated 
version of the file and then the calibrated. I also encourage you to take different, make different profiles at different types of light. And so this is done in the uh, evening time, right before the sun setting. Um, and you can see here, this is a great example of kind of the old pasty uh, pinkish colors here being changed and upgraded to that rich, nice yellow. So don't forget to use this uh, in different places, even around the world. I know, Sarah, you're listening. So I, I bet it has a different camera profile for light in Italy. No, I'm just kidding. I do think that the time of day changes this um, significantly. So all I'm saying here is that make sure that you use this and use it at different times of, of the day. All right, so color. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is storage. And so basically everything inside of Lightroom is created with is uh, stored in folders. So if you ever lose track of keywords and don't know where things are, um, you can always come down to the actual folder and start choosing which folder it is that you want to look at and find the images for. Um, and that's really helpful in the sense that every trip you take, if you've cataloged things properly, you'll be able to find by the type of shoot that you go on. And this is actually something that's not default in Lightroom. I override the defaults to create this. The default scenario is actually um, by day. And so if you follow the default Lightroom workflow, then what you're going to end up with is particular days that are in the shoots. So I encourage you to uh, follow along and see what I've done um, and how I get some of these uh, org organizational skills uh, easily usable. So the next thing I want to do is talk about where I store these files, and that's access and storage. So let's see here what I'm getting a little screen. I'll just say OK. So what I have set up today is a tree of images. And the tree of images is nothing other than put this off to the side. Tree of Images is nothing other than uh, of, to point out that Lightroom stores two things on your computer. Number one, it stores a catalog and that's in the pictures directory. And inside the pictures directory is going to be your Lightroom catalog. And this is where not only the catalog file is stored but the preview file as well. And in addition, you have the Lightroom settings, which I will point out to you later and show you how useful those are. All right. So I'm going to click that little do not show again there as well. It's good to see everybody here today. It looks like we've maxed out the, the meeting numbers. Um, the other thing that Lightroom stores is your images. And so the images are typically stored in the pictures catalog, uh, pictures directory, and there'll be a folder in there that Lightroom will make by default with the date. And so you'll have your images stored in a directory and then your Lightroom catalog information stored in a separate directory. So what that means is that you can actually move those things around to different areas. And I have all my images stored on a RAID and these are all the images under digital camera files. If you have multiple people, I make sep I recommend making separate folders for those. Under my folder, I have in 2010, you can see I started by date, which is the year, and inside the year, I have all the shoots or workshops that I was on in each year. Okay, and so basically, this is a very simple way to work. You're only making one folder for each shoot, and all the images from that shoot are going into that one folder. All right, so this is, you know, very basic stuff. I just want to go over it slowly so that everybody gets the tree of images because it's very helpful. Um, basically, the uh, since 2010, like I was mentioning, I've been using Lightroom, so it's given me the ability to focus on some of these issues just to clear them up and make them as simple as simple as possible. Um, and 
I also created this PDF and I'm going to open it right now and just go over kind of the objectives at this point of what we want to talk about today. Um, first of all, we have the organize all images into a tree, image tree, and that's uh, like I say here on the uh, first page of the PDF, which is your master images, or you can call it your name, followed by the year, followed by the shoot or location name or workshop. All right, and then I recommend one catalog. Now, this is something that um, Joe and I were talking about right before we started. Adobe has changed their mind several times about whether they recommend one or multiple catalogs. But the whole idea of a database is to be able to find everything that you've done in my workflow. So I, therefore I want a copy of every image inside of one catalog so that I can find at any one time any of those images or any combination of those images. Therefore I want to maintain one master catalog. Now the trick is, and this is what we're going to talk about today, is that because Lightroom can only open and manage one catalog at a time on a computer, you can't have the same catalog open on two computers and update it simultaneously. All right, so this is why I make a temporary catalog. So if I, I'm going to go through this today step by step, and that is, is if you have a laptop that you travel with and you have a studio or office or home computer that's separate, I'll call that computer one and your laptop computer two, then you're going to want to make this temporary catalog to use while you're on a shoot. And you can import everything to that, and you can do some of your editing. You know, typically when I'm out in a, on a shoot or a workshop, I use it to make a couple quick decisions about whether I like the work or not, and I'll give it stars or flags if I did. And then a lot of that information I want stored, and then I want to migrate that back into the master catalog when I'm back in my studio. So what you'll need in this particular workflow is you'll need to go on a cool workshop or photo shoot, number one, because you got to have a reason for that beautiful laptop that you're going to buy. And you're also going to want a second drive, which is an external hard drive. I think that makes it much simpler. It's a way to back up your files, and it's a way to migrate the catalog and the images back to your computer, number one, when you get back home or back to your office. So typically I have all my images stored on my camera cards and I leave them there. I buy enough camera cards so that I can use new ones throughout the shoot and then I download it to the ex this external drive and that's why I, that then that gives me two copies of all the images while I'm on the shoot. Okay? So I'm not going to go into the best ways to organize all of your picture files into a tree of images. But I do want to start by creating a catalog and a master catalog and just changing the preferences because I do believe those are important items when you do have a particular single catalog. All right, so let me go back here and we'll go inside 2013 and we'll go to a place that I went uh, early on this year and that is Big Sur Coast. Um, that was in January. We had a great time photographing some big waves and rainy weather. And the first thing I want to do is go over some of the preferences that I think are important. Number one, under the general tab, is I believe some of this is default. Um, if you want the camera card when you load it in your computer to show up on default, then you want to check that box. I typically don't because I'm going to tell the Lightroom when I want to import something. It's just my personal preference. Um, presets, a lot of this stuff is, is fairly irrelevant. I'm not going to go over all of it just to go over, just to get this, get to the best part of this. Um, but your external editor, which is in my case CS6, uh, the file format I want to save it in is TIFF, and I want to use the color space Pro Photo RGB and keep everything in 16 bits. Resolution is 240 is fine and I don't want any compression. Those are things that I know I had to change from the defaults. Okay, uh, DNG, capital or lowercase, it makes no difference unless you have some kind of computer system down the road that 
it does make a difference too, but the file is actually the same. And I do not want to embed an original raw file into my DNG. Uh, that's like two files in one. I don't think it's necessary. Okay, so DNG, just to clear this up, I do not convert my images to DNG files upon importing. I do that to the files that I want to archive and actually save later on. So it takes much less time. All right. The interface, there's nothing in there to change. Uh, I go back here to general and I'll go to catalog settings. And this is where I will make a change. I'll start at general here. Um, every time Lightroom exits is when I like to back it up. File handling, I believe I use standard previews. Nothing big, no news there. But this is where you really need to make one change. And that is you want to check this box to write changes into XMP files. This way you'll actually be able to save all the work you have done on your images if for some reason the Lightroom catalog file gets corrupt or destroyed. It'll store all that information or most of it in the XMP file. So if you're not converting to DNG you will want to change this preference. Okay, So those are a couple changes you want to make to your master catalog. Go back out here. Now, I'm going to show you now for the next steps is how to make your temporary catalog. All right, and the first thing I want to do is go back and show you the Finder window. And in here, I have mounted a Lacie external drive, and it's nothing other than uh, the latest uh, one terabyte drive, and that's what I use for most of my shoots or workshops. All right, and inside that drive on the first level, you want to add two folders. And one is going to be for the images, and the other is going to be for the catalog. So that's all you'll see on your external hard drive. This is where you're going to put your images, and this is where you're going to put the catalog file for Lightroom for your trip. Okay, so now we're going to go back to the master catalog, and the first thing we're going to do is go up and make a new catalog. And so that's up here, and that's under new catalog, file menu, new catalog. And I'll zoom in here a little bit, and we're just going to call this um, Big Sur. Where am I going to put that? I'm going to put it, in case this doesn't come up this way, on that external hard drive inside the Lightroom catalog folder that I just created. And hit create. And this is asking me what I want to do with the master catalog. And I don't want to back it up right now. I want to save some time. And now it's going to open that catalog. Close the master catalog and it's opening the second one or the temporary catalog. I've updated, of course. And then I want to make sure I have some of the same preferences. So I'm going to go back into catalog preferences. And remember, this is a new catalog, so I want to go into some of the things that I changed, um, which in this case was external editing. And I'll show this a little larger again and keep that as a TIFF. Pro Photo RGB 16 bits and all that good stuff that I showed you earlier. Go back to general. And under there, I'll go to the catalog settings. And once again, I want to automatically write changes into XMP. OK, now we'll close that, go back to full screen. Now we have our new catalog. And it says at the top of the screen the name of the catalog, in case you ever wonder what catalog you have open. And the next thing I want to do is quit Lightroom because inside here is some really good information and I'm gonna I have these two screens open and I'm gonna go into my Lightroom catalog Lightroom settings folders and I you see I have both open the one on the right is my temporary and the one on the left is my master and I have some develop settings okay and those develop settings are user presets and basically that is something that contains I'll show you as we import later, but that's something that contains the uh, 
camera calibration, which I showed you earlier that, that I used the, to make for my particular D800 camera. And then I have some sharpening settings and uh, some other settings that I've done that I want applied to every image that I import. And so I'll take that user presets folder and I'll put it inside the same folder over here or just the D800 profile and copy that over. The next one is the metadata presets. Okay, And I'll come down here to the metadata presets and I'll take the one that I want and put it in there. So now the next time I open my temporary catalog, I'll have everything there that I want. Okay, so just to prove to you, I'm going to double click on, this is the LACI hard drive right here. And what I've got here is the temporary catalog that I just made. Now when you plug this drive into your second computer or your laptop, don't just go down to the Lightroom icon to launch the program. You can launch a specific catalog by just going to that catalog file, the LR cat file, double clicking it, and it'll launch that catalog. Okay? So now let's pretend that uh, I'm on a great location, sitting on a porch with some hot coffee in my hand, and I'm beginning to uh, get anxious about seeing my pictures, so I'm going to start importing pictures. Um, since we updated the preferences, and I have all my uh, settings updated as well in this catalog, now I can import some images. So I'm just going to take a card, and I threw a couple images on here, and I'm going to go through the import process. Now I think that one of the biggest problems I see over and over in the workshops is that during the import process, people have imported their pictures to places all around the planet. Well, particularly all around their computer. Not only that, but they've imported them to other drives as well. And so, you know, just to reiterate, I do think it's very important that you put all your images on one drive at some time, because that'll give you the ability to back it up easier than any other workflow. So, take your time. If you need to buy a bigger hard drive to put all your images, then I recommend that that's that's your important data that you probably spent good money on. So, all right, so the import process is uh, basically down here in the lower left hand corner of Lightroom is the import button. And if we click that, then we're going to get a screen that is the import dialog. And there's my six images that I have set aside. And it tells you what you want to import on the left and how you want to import them. If you want to copy them as DNG, like I said, it takes about twice as long because it converts it to a DNG and then imports it. So I don't do that in the field. So I'm just going to copy them. And then here's the important part. This on the far right corner, upper right corner, is the link. And that's where the images are going to. So I'm going to click that and go down to other destination and this is where I'm going to tell Lightroom that I want it to go into the LACI drive into the images folder. Simply choose that. Now my images are going into one folder on my external hard drive for this catalog. So we have a bunch of options over here and I will just close everything so we can go through them. First of all, file handling, you want to render Previews? Well, I do. I've rendered standard previews. Um, I don't import suspected duplicates. That makes clear sense. If I wanted to, I could make a copy of the files to another hard drive. I typically don't. Uh, file renaming. This is where you're going to, you'll be given the ability to change the name of these files. And I will just recommend my choice is the shoot name and the original file number. And so in this case, I'm just going to call it Big Sur. And of course, now it gives you a little sample of what it's called. Sample Big Sur-6001.nef. Okay, that's going to rename all my files. Then I go down to apply during import, and this is where I get to choose some of the presets. And way under here 
is because I drug those presets over to my new catalog is my user preset, which I've named D800 Daylight. Okay. Here is also where I get to choose my metadata template. All right. And this is a very handy template to use. If you have not made one, I recommend it because this will save you all kinds of time. I'll show you really quickly in here. Uh, if you want to edit it, basically it gives you these options. Um, and as you fill each one of these out, it shows that it's activated those fields. All right. I'm going to just click Done and Don't Save. And once again, I'll choose mine. Now, I do recommend adding a keyword. And if all the pictures you've taken are in the same place, just a very basic keyword, which is where you were, helps significantly. And last but not least is the destination. And this is where you have to override the defaults. Now, the defaults in Lightroom are typically this. And if not, if this is not checked, then it's typically organized by date, and the date format is the year, and then of course the month and the day. And so what this does is it creates separate folders for each day. So I typically override that and say into one folder, and then as you can see down here, I've chosen on the LACI external drive the images folder. And that way they'll all go to the same spot and I'll be a happy camper. Okay, so that's all the key elements in importing your pictures. Um, this way you know exactly where they're going. They're going into the images folder. They have, uh, of course, really helpful information on them, which is the daylight uh, camera profile and then all the metadata I have. If I click import, now I'll be able to watch these things come in and know exactly where they live as well. All right, so if you're wondering ever in Lightroom where a picture is, well, if you right-click on it, I'm in the library view. If you right-click on it, there's an option here that says Show and Finder, okay? And just to prove to you guys that uh, it's not all smoke and mirrors, here is the images folder on the C drive, and that's exactly where that picture is stored. And the XMP file is there as well because we check that off in preferences. Okay, so now comes the part where I want to talk a little bit about what I do when I'm in the field editing. Um, like I say, I have, uh, I have a, well, I didn't say this, but I have a 13 inch MacBook Air and I have calibrated the monitor and I get it as close as I can to the monitor that I use in my studio, which is this iMac. However, that 13-inch MacBook Air monitor or display doesn't show the blacks nearly as well as my iMac or many other good monitors. So when I'm out in the field, I know that I'm not going to be able to see those blacks and that some of the banding that shows up is not really there. That's just the display. And the reason I know that is that I've taken the time to calibrate the monitor. So that's another key important element in my workflow that uh, I don't underestimate. Um, so first thing I do is uh, just to show you a little bit around in Lightroom that's stuff that's really important. Um, we have the catalog here and this is all the photographs. In this case it's six. Uh, it wasn't a very big shoot. No, I'm just kidding. That's just the ones I imported. And then here's folders and this is the folder structure I told you about. We've got six images there as well. And I'm not going to go over collections and publishing services right now. It's too much stuff. All right, so the only issue that I come with, or the only point I want to make out right now is that I want to look at these images and make a decision that whether it's sharp, whether I like it, uh, just a couple simple choices. And I increase the size of the previews by hitting the plus key on my keyboard to something that's big enough that allows me to see the composition. And in this case, I might look at these two images. It's a very similar composition, but the waves are slightly different. So I make a one star on the one that I like more by checking or clicking the number one key in the keyboard. And that's uh, when I get to one that I like the most of all, I might give it a two star. If I get to one that I can't live without, 
and I know that uh, my life is over if I lose this file, I give it a five star. That's just my personal way of rating these. Now what I do is once I give everything a one star, then I come up here and I'll zoom this in so you can see it. Right at the top of the bar, at the top of the window, is the attribute. And here it asks you a question. What do you want to see? Well, I want to see everything greater than or equal to one star. And therefore, it brings me back to the three images that I really want to see. And this is how I go through all my images and make sure that I have uh, the best ones collected. So I'll be quite liberal with the one stars and then eventually I'll get all the one stars to two stars. The ones that are two stars, then I want to spend the time editing. So I showed you how to import. I showed you where the images are going. Um, and in, in this case, I'm showing you a little bit about editing, some of the things I'm thinking about um, when I'm out in the field. And now, that leaves me with the last step, which is basically taking this catalog and migrating it with the master catalog. Okay, so I'm going to quit this, and as you can see, now I have master catalog up on the left, and pretend I just took a long plane ride. Now I'm back in Santa Barbara, sitting at my computer at my office, and I want to import the temporary catalog. All right, so just to be absolutely clear, Here's the hard drive that I just mounted, and double click that and open that window. And you can see that I have the images and the Lightroom catalog right there. And so I go over here to my master catalog, which is right here, and I've actually named it Mas MPI Master Catalog. Double click that. Now I'm back into the big master catalog and I go up here to file menu and I want to import as a catalog and it is import from another catalog okay and this is what brings up a dialog box and I'm just going to show you here that I check the LACI external hard drive and I go to the Lightroom catalog folder and inside there is the catalog and I choose the Big Sur.LRCAT file. Click choose. Then it brings up an important dialog box and I'm going to zoom this in so that you can see and make sure you choose the right options here. Number one, it tells you how many images there are and number two, it says file handling. Well, it gives you some options here but you want to choose copy new photos to a new location and import. Okay, That's going to move the files off of your external hard drive to your RAID or your computer number one, depending on where you want them to go. Uh, in this case, I said choose, and I chose 2013, and that's where I'm going to put these images. Click choose, and the next option is import. I'll click import, and I'll show you where all this goes. And here are the six images that I just imported, and it kept the folder name images. Okay, so the last step in this process of migrating this information is to change that folder name. And we're just going to go to rename, and in this case, I would call it Big Sur, but because I already have one, I'll just call it Test. Okay, and here's the actual images that I imported a while ago. Here's the test, and just to reiterate, here's the one star that I worked on. Remember, I put the one star on that image, and a two star there, and a three, five star here. So just to show you the power of this workflow, it gives you all the ability to work on your catalog while you're out in the field, and then save all those changes and migrate it back into your master catalog. Okay? So I know there's a few steps in there. I recommend you trying this and just literally making a test catalog on a external hard drive or even using your internal drive, that's fine, and just going through the steps several times before you actually go on a workshop or a shoot, okay? And um, so I so guess it's come to that point where I can answer some questions and go back over certain steps and 
Well, great. Not if somebody has some. That's great. We have lots of questions here, lots of really good questions. So uh, I'll just try to take them in order or in the order that I think is organizes them best. Um, first of all, what version of Lightroom you were using look like Lightroom 5 there, and does most of what you're saying apply to Lightroom 4? Good question. Yes, I am using Lightroom 5, and it does apply to Lightroom 4. So, in fact, it was Lightroom 4 that I developed most of this. I only changed a couple tiny things in Lightroom 5. So. All right. So let's go back to your profiles, your camera profiles, for just a moment. We got a couple of uh, questions there. Um, do you make a collection of standard profiles, or do you make a new one each time you're about to shoot something? The camera profile I use typically, daylight is daylight, and that's the one that doesn't vary much. So I've noticed very subtle differences in daylight profiles. Uh, Maybe there's one in Italy, I don't know. But essentially, <laughs> the only one that would really change it is up in elevation. And so that's one of the reasons I showed the picture I did, because that's up at 10,000 feet. And therefore, the color balance does change a little bit. Um, and that will make a difference. And I guess it's uh, possible if you were out in a dust storm or something like that, that, you know, if there was a lot of, a lot of dust or, or volcanic ash or something in the air, that might uh, change it a little bit as well, or what do you think? Sure, that would that would really that could be an option. I haven't yeah. thought of. I haven't shot any volcanoes in a while, but yes, <laughs> that would definitely any kind of smog. If you were shooting in a smoggy city for a yeah. long time and you wanted to make sure that you had the color balance right, I would recommend shooting one for sure. Okay, so let's go back to uh, your workflow again. If images are on several hard drives, is Lightroom seeing a thumbnail in the catalog? Uh, and then you need to connect the hard drive that the image is on in order to edit? Uh, yes. If, if, if Lightroom is seen images on several drives, that was the problem? Uh, no, just if you have several, you know, images on several drives. So you would have to have the drive hooked up to your computer in order to edit, even though you can oh, see correct. the thumbnail on, on Lightroom, right? That's correct. Right here on the far left, I'll zoom in a little bit here, um, and let me move this over so I can put it in the middle. Uh, essentially, you can hook up as many drives as you want to the computer, and then you have to import something from that drive in order for Lightroom to recognize it. And so here I have, I call it the bank one, that's my RAID drive with all my still images, and then I have video and time-lapse stuff on the bank too, which is a separate drive. So if I had images done the way that Lightroom recommends, uh, I would put everything, or the default way, everything would be on my Macintosh hard drive, in this case on the iMac. Um, and a lot of that stuff I've moved around. Occasionally I use a drive there and then delete it or something. You can see all the question marks. Um, you can always reconnect these drives if you lose them by saying find missing folder or you can update the folder location or synchronize it. So uh, a lot of times when folders are missing or files are missing, you can refine them. You just have to do it inside Lightroom. So. Yeah, it's uh, I do this to myself uh, with great regularity. I hide the, I hide a catalog from myself and uh, have to go and reconnect it. So, thank God that's in there. Um, we had one uh, attendee today who uses Bridge, and the question was, what are the great advantages of using Lightroom over Bridge? So I, I think I know the answer to that, but uh, I'll let you uh, say your answer yeah. to it. Yeah. So here. The biggest advantage of Lightroom over Bridge is that Lightroom will look at all your images simultaneously. Bridge will only browse one folder at a time. So here's all my different folders over the years that I've taken from 2010. These are all different shoots. But I can come up here to Digital Camera Files and there's 196,536 images. And in there I can come up and sort through those. So if I want to see all the images that have a one star out of those 19, 196,000, I can view them instantly. If I want to see everything that has five stars, I can view those instantly. So it's just accessing your work. As I mentioned earlier, 
you know, color balance and color accuracy is one of the big issues. But second of all, really, believe it or not, is accessing your work. And so, you know, I used a program called Canto Cumulus for years. It was about 7000 bucks, and we had multiple workstations that were accessing the database simultaneously. Um, and so I was used to that. When Bridge came out, it was odd, and I had to integrate just part of my workflow into that before it then went into Canto Cumulus. Well, now the good news is I can basically put everything into one catalog in Lightroom and do my entire workflow from beginning to end. You know, you come over here from library and you click the button up here in the upper right hand corner. Now you're in develop and inside develop you can use the tone curve, use all the tools that you have in Adobe Camera Raw that you have to launch from Bridge. So I do believe Lightroom's sped everything up and helped me not only find the images I want to find, but uh, work on them simultaneously. Cool. So is there a limit for the number of images in a catalog before it becomes unstable? You know, I think it depends. Well, I know it depends on your computer. So if your computer's older and slower, what will happen is Lightroom will become pokey. Um, but it's a good question because there's a couple issues that uh, might speed it up. If I come down here and I click on an image for 2012 or a folder for 2012, um, basically these thumbnails or these files will take a long time to render on an older computer, especially if in your preferences you've turned off or you've left um, deleting previews that haven't been used for 30 days. Um, so then you have to rebuild all those previews or thumbnails and then uh, that takes a while. Okay, so the other thing that I want to mention is that earlier I told you that Lightroom catalog file is stored on the actual hard drive itself right here in the Lightroom folder. That's, that's the internal hard drive of my iMac and I found that's the best place for it. Once I reached 100,000 images and I had it on the RAID with my images, it began slowing way down. So I put it back on the actual internal hard drive where the software boots from, and my images are still on the RAID, but it works much faster in my experience. So the catalog on the computer, but the, the uh, images themselves on, a, on another hard drive? Correct. Okay. Which is another way it can slow down. If your hard drive's connected via um, USB one, yeah, yeah, of course it's going to be quite slow. Right. Now, if you convert to DNG, do you lose settings if the XMP doesn't follow the DNG? Uh, if it doesn't follow, it doesn't need to, because essentially when you're when you're building that DNG file, it's looking at the information, the metadata inside the XMP and ah. it's bundling it all together. So a DNG file contains everything in the image plus everything in the XMP. Okay. So now this is a question we had from several, several, several people. Uh, when you were copying the, pre the preferences from the master catalog to the temporary catalog, the question is why not copy all the preferences from the master catalog to the temporary catalog? Um, you can. Good question. Uh, I highlighted those two because those are the only two things I change 99% of the time. Okay. But if you want to just drag your Lightroom settings folder, let me go over here to the C, and here's the temporary catalog, right? I can just take this folder and literally drag it over there and place it, or vice versa. Okay. And that would suffice. Absolutely. All right, so one user says I use the C drive for my main storage and copy to and back up to a G-Safe RAID. I have all the images on three drives at all times. Is that okay? So the backup is on a server, uh, on a RAID, and the catalog file is on the internal drive? Uh, it's not clear to me, but it looks like the all the images are on the C drive on the main storage. Uh, on the computer and copied to a RAID as well as a, as an image backup. Oh, sure, absolutely. If you have that, that's basic. Sounds basically like everything. The catalog file and the images are being stored on the individual's uh, 
uh, hard drive on their internal computer hard drive. So that's totally fine. Everything's on that hard drive. Nothing's on an external drive uh, except for the backups, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. Okay. Um, I actually back up. I don't do the default location for the backup in Lightroom. I actually put it on the RAID as well, and so I have that in a particular place um, on my RAID drive so that if something happens to my computer, then obviously right. the catalog is backed up on the RAID as well. Yeah. So now here's a question that's dear to my heart. How do I delete everything in my catalog and just start over? Uh -huh. Aha. <laughs> well, I think it's probably easier. If you're going to delete, uh, let me show you a couple things about deleting. Well, there's only two really. If you come to an image, um, you can right click on it and, and you can say remove photo. I don't recommend doing that because what happens is if I remove this folder uh, photo, it's still on the hard drive in the operating system. And I really don't want anything on the operating system hard drive that's not shown in Lightroom. I want to know everything that I have and therefore I want it to show in Lightroom. So I would, if I don't want it at all, I hit the X key and it's flagged as a reject. Okay, it'll show this little flag in the corner. Um, and then I hit delete. And it'll ask me, do you want to delete it from disk or remove it? Um, and if I wanted to delete it, I would say delete from disk. In this case, but, I'll keep it. But then it's gone, right? It's not just gone from the catalog. It's gone. That's correct. It's yeah. gone, gone for good. So I, if I want to delete something, I don't want to ever see it again. And therefore, it's going to be really a bad picture. It's out of focus, and there's nothing good about it. So um, I, I don't delete liberally. Um, I do add the one stars like I said, and then go back through and add two and three as I go through them. But if I wanted to get rid of everything in this catalog, um, which is all this file structure, uh, all the preferences I've saved, all the keywords, uh, there's a lot in the catalog. Um, you know, I'm, I may have worked on this in the develop module. Um, I might have a curve on it. I did a slight move on the curve there, and I have some things in the basic tab that I've worked on. You know, all that stuff, I, w I really want to keep it. So as long as I've changed the preferences to write to XMP or I've converted to DNG, I really don't need the catalog anymore for most of those development changes or keywords. So I wouldn't even bother deleting off this catalog. I would simply come up here and say new catalog and start over from scratch. And the next thing I would do, and I recommend this all the time, is to get your images organized. So wherever they are, if they're on, if you if you don't have a big enough drive for all your work, then buy two and separate it. Maybe 2010, 11, and 12 on one drive, and then 13 and you know space for 14 and 15 on the second drive. But at least get it all in in one or two drives in one place where your images are stored. Okay and then go by the year. That way you can grab this folder right here and back it up very easily. Yeah, this Once is... you have it all there, then you just import that folder. Uh -huh. You go into Lightroom and you say, um, I'll close this out right here. You come down here to import and you navigate to the folder. Like I know mine are on the bank and I would go to digital camera files. Okay. And everything would show up and I would click add. I wouldn't click copy or move. I would just want to add them, and that would leave them all on the drives where I organized them nicely and put them, but it will add them to the catalog. Yeah, this is exactly the situation that I, and I'm assuming a lot of other people are in, is where I have catalogs and I have files on this computer. I have catalogs and files on that computer. I have files on a, on a, on a hard drive that I use to move things off of a computer that uh, got full and run slow so so if I understand you right you're saying gather all your images find them from wherever they are put them in a single location and then re-import them into Lightroom so that you've got them all in one catalog right absolutely but not move yep. them you're just gonna import the uh, just gonna import not move that's correct it's you know once once you get everything moved around in the operating system outside of Lightroom and you put it all where you want it to go, 
Um, and I've worked with many people on this very same scenario, and they all think that it would be easier to do in Lightroom because you can see the thumbnail. But it's actually cumbersome and kludgy, and so it takes a lot longer, believe it or not. It's easier just to go into the OS and drag folders around until you get all of them in the right spot by year and location. And then, once they're all in that master file or folder of all of Barbara's images, <laughs> Brenda's images, then you can take Brenda's images and import the whole thing at once. And I don't know if you saw that, but on the import dialog box, there is a option to include the subfolders as well, right there. So I'll zoom in on that. Include subfolders, and that will give you the option to keep everything in the folder structure that you created in the operating system. Okay. Now we're running out of time, but we've got several more questions here. Um, is your external hard drive also backed up in Time Machine? My RAID is not backed up in Time Machine. Um, I have a program that I use called Backblaze, um, and Backblaze basically for five bucks a month will back up everything on your computer, make a mirror image of it, and whatever external drives you have. So it's pretty amazing for five bucks. It takes a while to get everything up there, um, and every time I come back from a shoot, it takes even longer because it's uploading at a whatever my internet speed is, and it's not the fastest in the world. Uh, but I recommend it. It works, and uh, it's a great backup for not only my computer, but everything else. Wow. Well. Say, say that again. Spell it for us. Uh, Backblaze is B-A-C-K-B-L-A-Z-E. Okay. And I believe it's, you can go to their website. I'm bringing up the preferences now. If it will let me. All right, Either now I'm going to ask you another question. Yeah, while you're at it. Um, Here's a question. Can I use an iPad as a traveling computer to hold a backup catalog? Now, I don't I don't think there's a Lightroom app yet for iPad. Is that right, or am I wrong about that? Uh, not that I've heard of. Okay. That would be fairly handy, but you really you still have to uh, import everything into that, whether you left it on an external drive and just added it. That would be the most handy. But from, what, from my knowledge, I don't know of that. So all right. essentially that would work. And it would be ideal because all you do is plug in your external drive and or your even your card, and from the card you can add all those images to Lightroom catalog on your iPad and then do all your editing, pick the ones you like, mark the ones you don't like, so forth. And when you get back, you can import that catalog. But you still, once again, you know you have to get you have to have a way of migrating all that information, which created which took time to create, in the travel catalog back into the master catalog. And so as long as it migrates back into the master catalog, it would work. Um, so it, we are just right on the 2 o'clock uh, time frame here. we got um, several other questions uh, that are uh, sort of uh, uh, getting more into the, the nitty-gritty here. Uh, we, we've really gotten to uh, most, of the, uh, most of the questions here. Uh, backblaze.com that's a that's a real nugget from this uh, webinar and we certainly uh, do appreciate everything you've given us today it's a it's an incredible amount of information mark great well sorry to go quickly hopefully I didn't go too fast but uh, you know so this isn't the most romantic part of photography <laughs> uh, so I, I do encourage everybody to get it down and get it over with and then then they can enjoy looking at their pictures uh, and and I will say before we go, uh, one of the things I do is I teach photography uh, in addition to shoots that I do commercially. And I have a partner, business partner, Andy Williams. And the two of us uh, and another silent partner, David Rosenthal, have created Munch Workshops. And we go to cool places around the planet, uh, Africa, Scotland, uh, and various places, you name it. Uh, and we do have on the website all kinds of new trips that you can choose from. Uh, we're going to uh, Yosemite in this October. We have a ranch experience in November and Big Sur, Big Print, where we're going to be shooting for three days and then get to print at Bay Photo. Wow. And so all these workshops are on our website. Um, and today, if you are able to, get to our website and sign up for our newsletter because we will pick somebody who signs up today to win a free spot on the Lightroom workshop next March here in Santa Barbara. 
Wow, that's a gr yeah. that's great. Right that's fantastic. So, yeah. All right, Maybe. everybody, that's great. Five hundred dollar value. So all right, we'll see somebody out there in March at our Lightroom workshop. All right, get on there and get get signed up. Well, thanks everybody for coming today. Now we uh, we have recorded this webinar. We did have a little bit of technical difficulty right on the front end, so there'll be just a little piece on the front end that's missing. But all the meat and potatoes of this uh, webinar will be recorded. Thank you so much, Mark, for joining us today. We so appreciate you being here. You're welcome, Brenda, and and thanks to everybody who attended. And y'all come around. back to another X-Rite Photo webinar sometime real soon. Take care, everybody.